So we need to set up our database and models in the best way possible. So going forward, if we want to add any more functionality, change something, it's going to be really easy to do. And we also want something that's really quick to get started with and also really easy to work with. So we're going to be installing Eloquent, which you might know is part of the Laravel framework. But of course, we can use this outside of Laravel and we can use it very easily within our Slim project. So first of all, we're going to create our database schema and just a couple of test records. Then we'll pull Eloquent in, we'll set up the configuration and we'll go ahead and create a quick test to make sure we've got everything set up. So if you go ahead and pull up whatever you're using to work with your database, I'm currently working with a database called CodeCourse, so make sure you have one created. And then we're going to just going to create one table. This is the users table. And we'll go ahead and create all the columns we need here. So this is the users table now. Uh, my database manager has inserted the ID, and this is an integer length of 11. It's unsigned because obviously it's has to be positive. It's a primary key and more importantly, it's an auto increment. So essentially just what you'd expect from any kind of setup when we create records, this will just increment. So what we also want is the user's name. So let's go ahead and add this and I'm just going to do the length as 255 and we're going to allow null for this one. Now what we want is to accept an email. So again, I'm going to do 255, but this we will untick for allow null. We don't want this to be null ever. And then of course we want a password. So let's give that a varchar. Again, we can choose 255 here and we can remove allow null. So as well as these, we also need to create a created at and an updated at column. That's because of just the way that Eloquent works, it will have a created at date when you create that record. And if you update it in any way, it will uh, update the updated at column to the current time. So let's go ahead and insert these. So we've got created at, which is a timestamp, and we have updated at, which is also a timestamp. Okay, so for these then, that's all we need really to just get started with authenticating users. So we've gone ahead and set up our basic schema. Let's just quickly create a record in here just so we can test this. Obviously, we're not going to be able to enter a password because we're going to hash this password or whatever password the user enters. So we can't really do much with that at the moment. So just a name and an email is enough just for now. OK, so now we need to pull Eloquent in. So how do we get this? Well, of course, we're going to use Composer to download this and then we automatically have it available in our project. So let's do a Composer require on Illuminate database like so. And this should download version 5 point something depending on when you're watching the video. And we'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, great. So that has all downloaded. We should now see it over in our composer.json file. It's there. So we're using version 5.2 here. And we can now start to pull it into our project. So the first thing that we want to really do is look at the settings because obviously we need to know where we're connecting to. So let's just jump over to app and or rather to bootstrap app and let's just add the settings in here we won't use an external package to manage our configuration of course you can go ahead and do that later but let's just add them to our slim configuration that makes a lot more sense just to quickly get going with this so for eloquent this requires a driver because obviously we can use any uh, system we have available so any database uh, software we have available in my case i'm using mysql then obviously we have a host, we need to know where to connect to, in my case it's localhost, and we have a database name as well, in my case it is CodeCourse. So next is the username and the password, in my case it's root and root, so I can just go ahead, quickly duplicate that down, and then we have some slightly different ones, so we have a, a, a char set, which is just the character encoding, we're going to choose UTF-8 for this, and we also have a collation here as well, and that is going to be UTF-8 Unicode CI. So that's uh, pretty much what we need. We can also add a prefix to our table if we want, or our tables if we want, but I'm just going to leave this empty. That will just prefix all of your tables with something. So for example, code course users, but we don't really need that. We can just name them on their own. So now that we've got our settings, we need to actually set Eloquent up. 
So we're going to go ahead and do this just down here. You could, of course, extract this off to another file. But let's go ahead and see how we pull Eloquent in, and then we can get testing it. So we're going to create a variable called Capsule. Now, Capsule is just the way that Laravel lets us use its components outside of Laravel. So this might seem a little bit strange, but that's all we're doing here. So it's under the namespace Illuminate Database Capsule Manager. So from this, what we can do is we can say Capsule Add Connection and where is this data coming from? Well, of course, it's coming from our settings. So to actually grab our settings, we grab them from the container because the settings that we've inserted here can be accessed under settings within our container. And then we just say DB. So here you can see we have DB. In actual fact, this should be just here. So let's pull this in and there we go, perfect. So now what we want to do Let's go ahead and set this as global and we'll see why we're doing this a bit later on when we test this out. So set as global, this will just allow us to use our facades and then we just want to boot Eloquent. And that is it. We now have Eloquent within our Slim project and we can use this. If you're not familiar with Eloquent, don't worry, we'll be covering it, of course. So now that we've done that, we also might need this on our container so we can use this directly. So there's two sides to Eloquent. We have uh, the database builder, so we can select a table, we can query it, we can use uh, where methods to grab data and sort things and all that kind of good stuff. But we can also use models and then use them as a kind of reference point to each table. So if we create a user's model, that means it's attached to our user's table and then we can just use that model. So again, we'll see how this works in just a moment. We'll demonstrate both of these. So what we want to do then is down here, add this to the container just in case we do need it. So let's go and create our closure just here. And just up here, let's go ahead, pull in our container. We want to use capsule because remember we've defined that just up here. So it's important that we do that. And all we do is return capsule, simple as that. So not only have we booted this so we can use it globally, so we can use models, we've also done this so we can access it via our container from within our controllers. Okay, so let's test this out then. We'll do this on the home controller. So just down here, I'm gonna kill the page and then we can test it out here. So we know that we have a users table. So why don't we just say this DB table users and we'll say where id one so this will give us this record what we can also do is things like find one that will grab the record with the id of one and of course we can get more advanced with this we can do lots of different where clauses we can do joins we can do pretty much anything and of course you can find that all over on the laravel documentation so let's just have a look at this then. So let's grab this record and down here, we'll just do a var dump on user. And of course, what we need to do is just assign that. So now we should see, there we go. So we've got that record out there. So now we can do things like user email and there we go, string and my email address. Perfect, so that's all working. So now that we've tested this, what we need to do is go ahead and set up our models. And you'll see how beneficial this is uh, when we actually go ahead and set everything up. And it's very, very straightforward to do, and it makes a lot of sense. So let's jump over to the next part and we'll create our user model and sort all that out.